once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had tried to borrow from my book's surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor, Entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor, Entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, Hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I open wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Then into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon I heard again a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely there is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then what there it is. In this mystery, explore. Let my heart be still a moment in this mystery, explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore, nor the least obsequious made he, not an instant stopped or stayed he, but with mine of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of Pallas just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. 
Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling. By the grave and stern decorum of the continents it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's nice plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly. Though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no sublinary being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculpted bust above his chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther then he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before, quoth the raven, nevermore. Wondering at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it others is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster, so I hope he would adjure. Stern despair returned instead of the sweet hope he dared adjure. That sad answer, nevermore. Straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat, engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating, she shall pass, ah, nevermore. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by angels whose faint footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath, hath lent thee. By these angels he hath sent thee, respite, respite, Bite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Let me quaff this nepenthe and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether temptest tossed thee here ashore, desolate, Yet all undaunted, on this desolate land enchanted, On this home by horror haunted, Tell me truly, I implore, Is there, is there balm in Galeen? Tell me, tell me, I implore, Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, Thing of evil prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, 
it shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked upstarting, Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven nevermore. And the raven never flitting, still sitting, still sitting, on the pallid bust of the palace just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted. Nevermore.